Today, we embark on a journey into one of the most enduring maritime mysteries, the Bermuda Triangle. This patch of the North Atlantic Ocean has captured the public imagination for decades, synonymous with unexplained disappearances and eerie phenomena. Countless ships and aircraft have reportedly vanished within its confines, fueling speculation from the scientifically plausible to the wildly fantastical. But what is the truth behind these tales? Is the Bermuda Triangle a genuine paranormal hotspot, or is it a construct of myth amplified by sensationalism? We'll navigate through historical accounts, scrutinize proposed geological and meteorological explanations, and consider human fallibility. So buckle up your intellectual seatbelts as we chart a course through the turbulent waters of myth and science. Let's begin by charting the very territory we're discussing. The Bermuda Triangle, often referred to as the Devil's Triangle, isn't an officially recognized geographical name. It's a colloquial term for a region in the western part of the North Atlantic Ocean, with vertices generally considered to be Miami, Bermuda, and San Juan, Puerto Rico. This ambiguity in its borders is the first layer of its mystique. The notion of this area being uniquely perilous didn't spring into existence overnight. Some trace the first whispers of unusual occurrences back to Christopher Columbus, who reportedly mentioned erratic compass readings and strange lights in the sky in 1492. The modern legend of the Bermuda Triangle began to coalesce in the mid-20th century. The term Bermuda Triangle was coined in 1964 by writer Vincent Gaddis in an article for Argosy magazine. Gaddis catalogued a series of unexplained disappearances within this triangular area, capturing the public imagination. Perhaps the most iconic incident is the disappearance of Flight 19 in December 1945. Five TBM Avenger torpedo bombers vanished, along with a PBM Mariner flying boat sent to search for them. The Navy's investigation attributed it to causes or reasons unknown, fanning the flames of speculation. Another major loss was the USS Cyclops, a massive Navy collier ship carrying over 300 crew, which vanished in 1918. No distress call was ever received, and no wreckage was ever found. The area dubbed the Bermuda Triangle is one of the most heavily trafficked shipping lanes in the world. Countless commercial vessels, cruise ships and private boats navigate these waters daily. Similarly, the airspace above is a busy corridor for commercial and private flights. The critical question is whether the number of disappearances within the Bermuda Triangle is disproportionately higher than in other similarly trafficked ocean regions. Many researchers and official bodies like the US Coast Guard have stated that it is not. They argue that the perceived mystery is a result of cherry-picking incidents and sensational reporting. The ocean is a vast and powerful entity and its inherent dangers are often underestimated. The Gulf Stream, a powerful ocean current, flows through parts of the triangle, creating unpredictable eddies and rapidly changing weather patterns. The area is also prone to tropical storms and hurricanes, which can generate colossal waves and extreme winds. The seabed topography in the Bermuda Triangle is remarkably diverse and complex. It features some of the deepest trenches in the Atlantic, such as the Puerto Rico Trench and shallow reefs and shoals. This varied underwater landscape can make locating wreckage incredibly challenging. If a vessel or aircraft sinks in deep water, finding it can be akin to finding a needle in a haystack. So, as we peel back the layers of history and geography, we find a region defined more by popular culture than by official cartography. The stage is set with a busy maritime environment, potent natural forces and a deep-seated human desire for mystery. Now, let's turn our attention to some of the specific scientific theories proposed to explain what might be happening in the Devil's Triangle. One enduring explanation for the Bermuda Triangle's mysteries centers on the Earth's magnetic field and the possibility of significant magnetic anomalies. For centuries, the magnetic compass has been a cornerstone of navigation. A magnetic anomaly is a local variation in the Earth's magnetic field, potentially caused by differences in the magnetic properties of the Earth's crust. Um, the theory posits that the Bermuda Triangle might harbor disruptive magnetic anomalies that could confuse compasses. Imagine a pilot or a ship's captain relying on their compass suddenly finding it spinning wildly or pointing in the wrong direction. This could lead to disorientation, causing them to deviate from their intended course. 
The idea of an invisible force meddling with navigational instruments adds to the triangle's enigmatic reputation. A key concept is the difference between true north and magnetic north, called magnetic declination, an agonic line where magnetic declination is zero has historically passed through the Bermuda Triangle area. Some suggest that peculiar magnetic characteristics in the region could cause unpredictable compass deviations. However, anecdotal evidence is not the same as repeatable, verifiable scientific data. Today, aircraft and ships are equipped with sophisticated systems like GPS, largely independent of the Earth's magnetic field. Scientific investigations have generally not revealed anomalies sufficient to disrupt navigation to the extent suggested by the myth. The U.S. Geological Survey states that there are no exceptional magnetic disturbances known in the area. Even if a compass were to become unreliable, experienced navigators have other methods to determine their heading and position. The idea of a persistent electronic fog is more science fiction than established geophysics for this region. The search for answers must push beyond simple compass deviations and explore other environmental factors. Let us now submerge ourselves into a fascinating theory, the sudden release of methane hydrates. Methane hydrates are crystalline solids formed when methane gas is trapped within ice-like cages of water molecules. They form under specific conditions of high pressure and low temperature, typically found in deep ocean sediments. The theory proposes that large deposits of methane hydrates exist on the seabed within the Bermuda Triangle if these deposits were to become destabilized they could release enormous quantities of methane gas in a catastrophic eruption. This sudden upwelling of gas bubbles would dramatically reduce the density of the water, potentially causing a ship to lose buoyancy and sink. Laboratory experiments have demonstrated this principle. The Blake Ridge, located off the southeastern coast of the United States, is one of the largest known methane hydrate deposits. Natural mechanisms like underwater earthquakes or submarine landslides could destabilize methane hydrate deposits. Changes in ocean temperature or pressure could also alter the stability conditions of these icy gas traps. While scientists have found geological features suggesting past methane eruptions directly linking such an event to a specific ship disappearance is challenging. There are no definitive eyewitness accounts of a ship vanishing amidst a giant plume of methane bubbles. The theory offers a compelling mechanism for sinking ships, but is less clear on how it would affect aircraft. Some speculate that released methane could create pockets of air with insufficient oxygen for aircraft engines. The scale and frequency of such events are debated. For methane hydrates to be a primary explanation, these releases would need to occur frequently enough to account for the reported disappearances. Despite these questions, the methane hydrate theory remains scientifically intriguing it relies on known geological phenomena and understandable physical principles. It's a reminder that the ocean floor is a dynamic environment with its own set of potential hazards. Beyond the seabed and the magnetic field, let's turn our gaze to the surface of the ocean, where rogue waves lurk. For centuries, mariners told tales of colossal waves capable of overwhelming even the largest ships. These accounts were often dismissed as exaggerated, but recent observations have proven rogue waves to be real and powerful. A rogue wave is a surface wave whose height is more than twice the significant wave height. They appear as near vertical walls of water, often preceded by a deep trough. The formation of rogue waves is complex, involving constructive interference and the interaction of ocean currents with waves. The Gulf Stream, which flows through the Bermuda Triangle, can increase wave height dramatically. Rogue waves can reach heights of 100 feet or more, giving little warning to an unsuspecting vessel. A ship struck by such a wave could be broken apart or sunk quickly with minimal debris. The conditions within the Triangle are conducive to their formation with the powerful Gulf Stream and frequent storms. A rogue wave encounter would explain many aspects of the Bermuda Triangle legend's sudden disappearances lack of distress calls and minimal wreckage. The Drapna wave, measured in the North Sea in 1995, was one of the first confirmed rogue waves. Satellite imagery has since identified numerous instances of extreme waves globally. Rogue waves primarily explain the loss of ships with minimal direct impact on aircraft. However, they present a compelling explanation for sudden catastrophic maritime losses. 
terror of encountering such a phenomenon is hard to overstate. The ocean's capacity to generate extreme events is a stark reminder of its untamed power. These waves need no supernatural assistance to be deadly. After exploring exotic theories, it's time to consider explanations that are statistically more likely human error and natural environmental conditions. Human error is a factor in a vast percentage of accidents worldwide, and the Bermuda Triangle is no exception. Navigational mistakes, especially before widespread GPS, could easily lead a vessel or aircraft off course. Poor decision-making under pressure can also play a critical role. Inadequate training or inexperience can lead to situations where individuals are unprepared for the challenges posed by open ocean conditions. Mechanical failure, often due to insufficient maintenance, is another common cause of accidents. The nature of the traffic in the region also contributes, with many stories involving smaller private vessels and aircraft. Overloading a small boat or venturing out in unsuitable conditions can significantly increase the risk of encountering an emergency. The Bermuda Triangle lies in a corridor known for sudden, violent storms, particularly during hurricane season. Hurricanes can generate winds over 100 miles per hour and seas of 50 feet or more. Water spouts, tornadoes forming over water, are also common in the region. The Gulf Stream, a powerful ocean current, can create turbulent sea conditions and rapidly carry debris far from the incident site. Disorientation, even for experienced mariners and aviators, is a real danger, especially in bad weather or low visibility. When famous Bermuda Triangle cases are re-examined, plausible conventional explanations often emerge. Organizations like the US Coast Guard and NOAA do not recognize the Bermuda Triangle as uniquely hazardous. They assert that incidents can largely be attributed to known hazards of sea and air travel. The mystery may lie more in our storytelling than in the ocean itself. The true wonder is in appreciating the immense natural forces at play and the human endeavor to understand and navigate them. And so, our voyage through the lore and science of the Bermuda Triangle comes to a close. We've navigated historical accounts, delved into theories and considered human error and natural forces. Thanks for watching Facts with AI. I hope this exploration has illuminated some of the murkier waters surrounding this enigma. The Bermuda Triangle holds a potent grip on our imagination, but scientific evidence tends to steer us towards more conventional explanations. Critical thinking and a demand for evidence are our best compasses when navigating seas of misinformation. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring.